but I want to introduce you to our last speaker of this event, Nancy Turner. Nancy oh. is conservator of manuscripts at the John Paul Getty Museum, where she has been responsible for the preservation and conservation of the collection of illuminated manuscripts since 1984. Her areas of specialty include the conservation treatment and technical study of parchment and painting materials of medieval and Renaissance illuminated manuscripts. She has a BA from Stanford in, from, in 1983 in art history and anthropology and a master's from the University of California from 1996 um, in history. She studied bookbinding with Olivia Primanis and David Brock and held the advanced conservation internship at Trinity College Library Dublin during the academic year of 1989 to 1990. She first met Christopher Clarkson while taking his courses in medieval book structures um, in 1985 and in 1987, which was co-taught by Michael Gallick at the Columbia University Rare Book School. She contributed an essay in the volume on Romanesque, Romanesque binding in the John Paul Getty Museum, Materia Materials, Craft, Technology, and Monastic Reform. Nancy, please. Well, thank you, Brea and Alberto, so much for organizing this event and also for your energy and hard work to see this publication to fruition. Um, it really is a privilege to participate in today's book launch, and I am just deeply honored to be here, zooming in from California to pay tribute to Christopher Clarkson. So as Nicholas Pickwood uh, so memorably remarked uh, in his wonder, wonderful introduction to the volume, as well as to this morning, or for me, this morning's session, part of the session, um, Chris regarded Romanesque bindings of the 12th century as the pinnacle of binding craft technology. And my contribution centers on the only original 12th century binding in the collection of the Getty Museum, a manuscript of the life of St. Anselm by Edmer of Canterbury, which I show you here. This mid 12th century manuscript was likely made at the reformed Benedictine Abbey of St. Martin's of Tournay. And as one of the few original bindings in the Getty's collection, this manuscript inspired Chris, um, Chris's visit to LA, really we were still in Malibu at that time in 1994, so that he might come to study the binding and advise on any treatment. His condition report, which in included another one of his beautiful reconstruction drawings um, of its original appearance, which I show you here, was prepared on that occasion. Chris's report served as the starting point of my essay for the JPC volume, and I dedicate it to him. Certain features of this binding struck Chris as unusual, particularly its um, undecorated tanned leather chemise or overcover and its lack of an undercover. Chris was also intrigued by the combination um, of both tanned leather and alum tod skin, uh, the and the fact that the tan leather overcover is attached to um, bare wood, wood, wood boards by narrow envelope pockets and sewn on turn-in flaps of white alum tod skin visible at board ed edges. Later interventions included the harsh cutting down of the overcover skirts, rendering the split closing stitches visible at board edges. The book was also rebacked with new leather adhered to a, a thick layer of adhesive, probably PVA, um, directly to the parchment uh, spine folds of the choirs. Additionally, uh, the foredge flap on the tanned leather overcover was folded onto the inside of the lower board and held in place with a modern paper board sheet, as you see it right. And this particularly uh, just <laughs> sent, sent Chris over the edge <laughs> to think of someone doing this. Um, in raking light, the contours um, of the rectangular shaped Todd turn in flaps become more apparent along with the corresponding impressions onto what is now a final flyleaf, but which originally had been pasted down as a conjoint board sheet, giving the leveraging action Clarkson expected to see in a Romanesque binding. On the inside face of the upper cover, we see the contours of the narrow Todd skirt envelope pocket along the foredge of the board um, and the trapezoidally shaped turn-in flap. Note the small round um, green stain from a copper pin tacked at the corner of the turn-in flap, which you see on the what had been the board sheet or paste down. This and other pins were made visible in the x-rays of the boards, which weren't done until uh, a number of years later, as are the short lacing pass of um, the two split Todd sewing supports and the single core end bands laced diagonally at spine corners. 
Yet for Chris, many of the Edmure's binding features did not square with his understanding of Romanesque Chinese bindings, which understandably was based on his experiences with English Romanesque bindings, like the example in the Huntington Library. Made circa 1200, um, it has a wide, a white Alan Todd undercover and an overcover of the same material with deep envelope pockets. The only use of tan leather is for the in edge finishing on the skirts of the overcover. And though a few undecorated tanned leather chemises on um, English manuscripts have been identified, and I, I and Michael Gullick was the one who alerted me to the ones I enumerated in the essay, all are considered exceedingly rare and atypical. Um, so better comparisons to the Getty Edmure binding are found, not surprisingly, in Tournai and the surrounding region. Tragically, <clears throat> the city library of Tournai was bombed during World War II, destroying the vast majority of the manuscripts held there. A rare survivor to which I owe Le uh, Leva Wateo, um, thanks for alerting me to this, is a three volume glossed Bible from the late 12th, early 13th century from St. Martin's of Tournai, the same Benedictine Abbey as the Getty Edmer. And like the Edmer, the glossed Bible volumes have full undecorated tanned leather overcovers that are secured to bare wooden boards with envelope pockets and turn in flaps of alum Todd skin. None have undercovers. And the volume I show here, though, is unique uh, among the three for its envelope pocket on the upper board, which extends to become a four edge flap and the turn in pieces, which run the full width of each board. I don't know if you can see my cursor here. Um, but for um, the other two volumes in the group, not unlike the Edmer, the turn in flaps are irregularly shaped, kind of rectangular or trapezoidal, and are attached mechanically with small copper pins. The, volume also, the volumes also have conjoint parchment board sheets supplying the appropriate, le appropriate leveraging action upon opening. Yet these volumes have also suffered from later interventions. The skirt extensions have been cut down to the split closing um, stitches at the boards, and they have been re-backed, a treatment history not unlike the Getty Edmer. So the search for undisturbed examples of this binding type is, is actually very much rewarded at the library and in Saint-Omer. The majority were made at the Cistercian Abbey of Clermarais. Um, and as many of you are aware, Berta van Regamorta was among the first to study them and her preliminary observations were published in a brief, um, sadly unillustrated note in 1951. And like Clarkson, van Regamorta puzzled over their structure and materials. Upon looking at the turn-in flaps in particular, she noted, quote, their only function is to allow the attachment of the outer skin to the board. This outer skin is too thick to stay pasted, and it is thank to, thanks to the thin skin to which it is sewn that it stays in place. And I'm very intrigued by uh, Cedric Elodie's and, and Claire's paper about the uh, the possible the, the Alan Todd parchment and wonder if some of some of these might be that material that they've now recreated. Re produced, which is so amazing. So in the Claire Marais bindings, this kind of piece construction was used for full thickness, undecorated tanned leather, alum Todd skin, and for hair skins, uh, the latter identified as seal skin, like the one you see at the left, um, by the Beast to Craft team. But only by studying a number of the Claire Marie bindings did it become clearer to me, given the irregular shapes, splits, and natural edges of the sewn on turn-in flaps, that these pieces were themselves likely to have been salvaged from offcuts of full skins. Van Regamorda saw the Claire Marais bindings as highly conservative for the period and even as sloppy work. She considered them as somewhat deceptive as they gave the impression by cutting corners she felt of having an undercover when in fact there was none. Um, additionally though, in the Claire Marais bindings, the use of a thin but strong Todd spine liner uh, which acts as a quarter binding between, beneath the chemise, strengthens the board attachment and significantly contributes to the structure's overall solidity. So besides these practical and structural choices, um, the commitment to high quality materials is very clear. Um, similarly, the bindings from the Cistercian abbeys of Terdost and Terdun in, in Western Flanders also fits within, these within this class or type of Romanesque binding from the second half of the 12th and into the early 13th century, 
And I thank Sean Thompson from CUL for sharing his photos of some of these bindings with me that I could put them in my presentation here. But clearly from looking at just these, this relatively small group, this is a binding style or type or method, how it, whatever you want to call it, um, that's characteristic of this region in, Flan in Southwestern Flanders and, um, and beyond as my essay indicates. But these books are often ignored because of their lack of decoration and their relatively rough, rough appearance. But they are, and they're finally being recognized now and appreciated for their importance within the history of medieval monastic book technology. In fact, the book bindings from Tordost and Tordunen are being systematically studied at the Book Heritage Lab at Catholic University in Leuven, headed by um, Liva Watteo. So what we must remember is that this was the period of greatest expansion and wealth for the reformed orders. It was their prosperity that brought about the production of these manuscripts as reformed communities built and expanded their libraries. So whereas the use of scraps might be might appear consistent with the Cistercian spirit of thrift as um, some authors have described these bindings, their, particularly their combination of materials, their robust and sturdy character, and their lap, lack of vain or superfluous ornamentation, I believe signaled their difference purposefully as they played a central role in the monastic reform efforts of the 12th century. These books were built to educate and to last. And moreover, I believe these bindings embodied this maxim that I show of Bernard, uh, Bernard of Clairvaux, the founder of the Cistercian order. What is subtracted from superfluity is added to utility. I offer this study as a tribute to Chris and think these words strongly resonate with his own approach to bindings and his ethos for minimal interventions and conservation. Exemplars for all, as we've heard beautiful, so beautifully articulated today. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of this session, and it has truly has been an honor being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy.